Good day, ladies and gentlemen. M Modest here again. I just want to let you know that we'll be showing you now the how to. How did we turn turret three? Uh, just to let you know, I've been interviewing uh, several people, so I look forward to having you come by and join me and how we turn turret three electrically. So stay tuned, and hopefully you'll come by and see this video very, very soon. Take care now. So this is Chief Palmieri, Artie Palmieri. Uh, I just want to introduce him. This will be one of a few people who I'll be talking to about how we turn tour three. Chief, can you explain a little bit about yourself, where you came from, your experience at the USN, sure. and what you're doing here, please? I'm retired electrician's mate chief, surface warfare specialist, surface warfare qualified battleship. I was one of the first ones to qualify right here on the Iowa. I spent from 1983 to 1989 on board the Iowa. So I'm quite familiar with her electrical generation systems. Um, yeah, I got involved with the Iowa in 2011, late. Uh, I was introduced to Mike Getcher, our chief engineer and chief operating officer, by uh, Mr. Robert Kent, who was the original C C CEO. Um, and Mike was instrumental with getting me out here. He picked me up at San Francisco Airport and uh, did a lot of work up in Richmond. And, but I've been traveling back and forth for the better part of every year, with the exception of COVID, uh, since uh, 2012. So, Chief, uh, let's go ahead and ask you a few questions about how we turn turret three, uh, turret three. In a sense, uh, the main question that many people have often asked on my channel is, how was it done? Uh, we understand we use short power. Could you explain that a little bit and how we did that, please? First of all, let me dispel the rumor that we lit off a boiler and rolled a generator. That's entirely, absolutely, 100% false. We turned turret three using installed original 1940s equipment nothing modified nothing added um with short power we used uh four short power cables hooked up to our receptacle box which has 10 receptacles uh, i'll get to that in a second so with four cables we had 1600 amps capability since the starter motor for the train is a uh, reduced voltage starter. It has an auto transformer in it. So as soon as you mash the start button, it, uh, you don't get full voltage across the line. You get a reduced voltage and a reduced start. The motor starts up slower, ramps up the speed, and then shifts to the run windings. With that in mind, um, whenever you get close to the electrical load on the ship, the lights start flickering and they go dim. That never happened. The lights did not dim. The lights did not flicker. Um, we have 10 short power cables because back in 1984 we had eight short power cables like the other three battleships. But our gunner's mates absolutely positively refused to come to the electrician's mates and request what our load was at the time. They would just arbitrarily turn, turn the turret and it would trip us off a of short power. So we had to go run out to the pier, reset the breakers, come back in and chastise the gunner's mates until they did it the next time. Well, we got tired of doing this. So our division officer, Lieutenant Battaglia, he's a LDO, he was our first division officer. He approached Nav C with a proposal to have two spare receptacles installed. How he convinced them to do this, I never know. But all I know is they, they gave it their blessing, and we got uh, receptacles 9 and 10 installed, and they were never used as spares after that. We used all 10 every time we come in. We had a full 4,000 amp capacity to play with, and consequently we never dropped the sword power because of the turrets rotating again without telling us. Um, since we have those 10 receptacles uh, on either side, 
uh, do we need to shut anything down? Is there anything that we need to power down before we actually do a PMS, uh, the personal maintenance on, on those turrets, as you explained? Yeah, the, um, we only used four. So we had six, uh, each one of them is a 400 amp capacity, okay. so we had 1600 amps. PMS in the turret, they, uh, I know they got to do swing checks, which we did swing checks with the turret once we got everything going. But as far as shutting anything down, we oh, didn't need to shut anything shutting down. Shutting down, we, we took a precaution. It's called stripping the load. Uh, what you do is you shut down uh, unnecessary circuits, like uh, ventilation gets shut down. Uh, I, I took a walk along the second deck and all the, uh, the side spaces, like dental and uh, filter cleaning shop. They, we didn't need lights on there, so I killed them all. So that reduced the load a little bit, but um, we really didn't need it. Uh, like I said, the lights didn't flicker, the lights didn't dim. I'm here with one of our ops people, one of our favorite ops guys on board the ship and gals as well. But this is George Muschelin, and he's been working on board the USS Iowa for quite a long time, uh, for at least over 10 years. But George, could you introduce yourself to our fans here and what was your experience? What's your experience on board the ship as well? Yes, well, thank you, Mo. I'm glad to be here. And uh, first of all, my name is George Mousseline and I've uh, been a naval shipbuilder for 45 years. And for the last 11 years, my job has been the Iowa. And I love it. I'm into it 100%. I treat it like my own body. I'm protective of it. So we're talking about turret three. Well, we had a reason to do this. It wasn't just for fun, even though it was a lot of fun. But really what we did is uh, we, we need to load shells into the ship. And uh, the safest way to do it is to rotate the turret and use the ship's equipment to move those heavy shells. Around. We're moving like 175 one ton projectiles onto the ship for ballasting and for display purposes. And uh, it started a year ago. We started working on this, physically working on it, preparing the ship, lighting inside the turrets, ventilation. Many problems were encountered with the wiring that needed to be corrected, fuses replaced, testing for safety, and there's ways that we do that with meters and mega meters, and uh, all of that was employed. And uh, okay, so to move a turret, you need electricity. And so we worked on the shore power here. We have uh, 1,600 amps available. And yes, there is an 1,800 amp breaker in the switchboard that powers up the turret. But that 1,800 amps covers the elevation motors, all of the auxiliary systems in there. There's a bunch of things that we aren't using at this time, the, the projectile ring, the capstans. And uh, so really all we wanted to do was power the train motor and uh, the associated systems involved with that. Okay, so regarding the shore power on the ship, on the USS Iowa, we have four 400 amp receptacles on the pier that come from the power company, whether it be Edison or SCE or wherever we get our electricity from. And uh, so that's uh, four 400 amp circuits, that's 1600 amps at 490 volts AC. And uh, the ship was originally designed to run on 440, but we've got 490, that's what they give us. So, you know, you're within the ballpark. Actually, it's to our advantage because the more voltage you add, the lower the amperage for the same amount of work. It's a, there's a mathematical equation involved. Okay, so uh, as an electrician, there's a lot of mundane, obscure things that we have to look at. When you run a motor and it starts up for the first time, even if it's rated for say 100 amps of power to run that motor, when you first turn it on, it's about six times that amount. And it's called an inrush. When you first start up a motor because of inertia and it has to start going and it's like, mm, and it goes, right? Well, uh, so we, we considered that and 1600 amps is really a little bit less than what it should take to start this motor up. But the, the Navy was way ahead of us. They installed what's called an auto transformer in the circuit. And that helps with this process of starting the motor up. 
almost like a little booster. And, uh, you know, you have to dig deep to find out these type of things. We did our research, we used tech manuals, and there was a ton of prep work on that turret before it ever moved. And uh, consulting with experts besides myself, and, uh, you know, putting new lube oil, testing for safety, testing for safety again, getting fire extinguishers in place just in case, and, you know, communications, you know, the, the ship's sound-powered phone systems, the 11MC uh, electrical PA system, intra-turret communications, radios, we had it all. We This thing was well thought through. I've got to give credit to Mr. Mike Getcher for the excellent plan that we used for this. Okay, so George, here's a question I have for you. Uh, this question came up a couple times. Uh, are the sh turrets on the ship welded? And tell you about your experiences about the rings as well. I've seen videos of other ships and they have undoubtedly been welded. On this ship, there was evidence that one of the locking pins may have been welded at one time. And uh, maybe someone, maybe just in the, the transit, it broke away. So there was one that was not connected when I got here 11 years ago. And uh, when we moved the turret, last month we unscrewed the opposite there's two locking pins there was one locking pin that was still engaged we had to disengage that one and uh, the ship was you know the, the turret was centered properly because if it's not directly straight you can't engage the locking pins so uh, we disengaged the one pin and uh, we did a lot of checking and double checking because I love the ship and I'm also a man of pride and I don't want to break it, be the one that destroyed a piece of history, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were watching ourselves. We worked and we were painstaking. It was like archeologists unearthing things, you know? And uh, so it was a great experience riding in Turret 3. I got to be inside there during the actuation of the unit and uh, I was along for the ride. I was the electrician, the roving electrician. <laughs> and uh, no problem, you know, it started up smooth, it sounded good, you know, but we had to put all new lube oil, all new hydraulic oil, and make sure all the valves were lined up. And we did what we had to do, and it was, it was a thrill, but it was for a reason we weren't showing off. <laughs> we just had a job to do, and that was part of the job. I never thought I'd get to do it, but right. fortunately, it, I got to be one of the key players that made it happen, you know, and uh, as far as um, elevating the, the barrels, you could easily. All the equipment's there. It's in good shape. When they put it away back in 1990, they spent a lot of money to pickle everything and preserve it, and it was working when they parked it, you know. You could, but we'd have to do the same thing. We'd have to go through all the electrical checks. We'd have to suck out all the old preservatives and oils and cosmoline and gunk clean it lube it it's a lot of work and we don't really need to so yes we could are we going to probably not unless something else comes up okay George well you know I, I appreciate everything you mentioned uh, your work here on the Iowa has been totally outstanding uh, George and I have been working on board the ship as uh, as ops I was a a younger lad back then carrying stuff and moving stuff around but George has been here a very dedicated electrician that we've had on board our ship and we are so very grateful I personally I'm very grateful for him as one of my shipmates on board the Iowa and helping us out in the US Navy so George again thank you very much for your time and thank service you, Mo. absolutely Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're here with uh, Chief Petty Officer, uh, Hall Tech Chief David Mosier. Uh, Chief, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience in the U.S. Navy as well, please? Uh, Chief Hall Tech Dave Mosier, uh, a Hall Technician for 20 years. Basically, what we did ship fitting, so anything dealing with ship repair, non electrical, uh, take care of the ship's uh, plumbing systems, firefighting as well working hand-to-hand -hand with the damage controlmen, training the ship's crew and actually uh, performing damage control. 
Uh, you're on Iowa. I'm the engineering manager, so basically I'm in charge of the team that restores, maintains, and uh, keeps the ship somewhat operational. The systems that we do have operational and keep the ship uh, in good condition for future generations. If you've been here for even though a short amount of time has been very valuable for us on the Iowa. Could you explain some of the stuff that you've done on board the ship, please? I started volunteering in 2018. Uh, back then, I started off in tours and then uh, security. In 2019, I became the part-time welder for the ship. So, running around, storing some of the uh, rust vents, replacing sections of metal, decking, especially up in the superstructure. So we had a lot of leaks from ship rotting away over the time she was in mothballs. So Chief, the next question I have, uh, what power requirements were needed uh, from shore power? Uh, many people just don't really understand that we use shore power on the ship. Can you explain that next, please? Well, not being an electrician, I'll give you the best explanation I can. Uh, basically with two cables, which is what we started off with, we only had 800 amps of power, and we needed roughly 1,600. So we were uh, able to get two more shore power cables from. So that really doubled the capacity, which allowed us to turn the turret three. As far as the turret, let's go and talk about that. What would you? What were you doing inside turret three? If you could explain that for us. When we, when we first decided to get the turret rotated, uh, we had to check all the systems. We had to drain all the hydraulic and you know, lube oil systems out of the turret. We didn't mess with the elevation because we have no reason to elevate the guns at this point. So we were concentrating on the training here. But we could elevate the barrels if we wanted to, yes? We could. We'd have to drain the systems, flush them, and replenish the system with oil, clean oil. Now, as far as the electrical systems for us to actually turn the turret, how was that done? What do we need to do to actually get the turret to move electrically? Could you explain that for us? So a lot of it was going into the boards, make sure all the wiring and contacts were in good condition, make sure they operated and were cleaned, and then we had to line up the switchboards, make sure they were you know, viable for what we needed to do a lot of power and we weren't going to just chance it. So Chief, really quick, I want to thank you very much for spending some time with us, uh, with me specifically. Uh, I appreciate all your work that you have done on the ship. So if I can, just want to shake your hand very much. And you're doing a great job. We all appreciate everything you've done for us, including here on this ship. Uh, as far as the generators, uh, people have been asking us, do we have to light off a boiler, do the generators spun up? Could you explain that for our, our guests here as well? Well, the entire ship uh, under the water line was closed up. All the pipes and everything that were you know, sea suctions are all welded over. So we can't run diesel generators, which would have provided some power. And we're not going to light off any boilers, which would have provided steam to the ship's generators. So none of, the, none of that equipment was operational or probably ever will be operational. So we're strictly relying on shore power. We did it, you know, I mean, the, the ship system worked. We didn't have to strip the board. We used strictly shore power. There were no steam turbine generators or diesel generators or any generators on the pier. Strictly our 1600 amps was available on the ship and we didn't trip anything. Uh, to be honest, it seemed like it was too easy. We probably could have done it with less than four cables. Hmm. And the other battleships as well. Uh, supposedly there's a rumor, you mentioned it briefly as well. Uh, could you explain what the electrical demands are for our ship compared to theirs? Um, I don't know what their load is, but all I know is um, there was a posting posted on uh, the internet stating that it was impossible to train a 16 inch gun turret while on shore power. Well, that myth has been very effectively 
debunked and shattered. We can put that to rest. As the proof is in the pudding, we got at least 11 videos. <laughs> there was 11 different cameras in that turret or around it that uh, proves that point. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's on the internet that wants to keep sticking to the mind thought that uh, we lit boilers, we roll generators, that's the farthest thing from the truth. So you can think that all you want, but you're in your own little world. The reality of it is, is it was all done with shore power, it was all done with installed equipment, original equipment. No modifications, no alterations, no additions. Okay, well, Chief, I thank you very much for your time and uh, doing this interview. Uh, I appreciate everything you have done to help out our ship on the Iowa, and uh, your well, was, work has been much, much, was, much was, appreciated. Was, it's always a pleasure coming out here to work on my girl. So to all my guests over there on YouTube, this is Hey Mo. I want to thank my chiefs, Chief Palmieri, Chief Mosier, uh, for explaining the, the challenges, the difficulties on board the Iowa and what we needed to do and how we got turret three turned around. Uh, I also want to include George Muslin uh, as well. Hope I got that correct, George. Uh, but thank you very much to the three of you. You all been such great uh, shipmates on board to Iowa. And hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions that you all have, okay? This is Ed Modest. Talk to you guys really soon. Make sure you subscribe. Lates.